What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm doing a video I actually just said in my last video I wasn't going to do and that's a combo video for Sword Soul and while this may not be your typical standard combo video what I'm actually going to be doing is showing you guys different situations you can be in and how to play around those situations. Essentially Sword Soul is a deck that really punishes you if you play it incorrectly so I'm going to be showing you guys how to not do that. Now if you guys enjoy these kind of videos where I kind of show you how you can do optimal plays not just a two card combo that can be stopped by hand traps i really want to be showing you guys how to actually play the deck and i think this is a good video for it so if you guys do enjoy these kind of videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we typically do combo videos but i really wanted to change it up again like i said i really wanted to show you guys how to play sword soul if you guys want just combos i have another video and i'll link it in the description for you guys to check out so you guys can see all the two card combos the one card combos all that good stuff all right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get right into the com combos i don't know to call it. let's get right into the video so first thing i want to show you guys is this situation you can be in where you open a hand somewhat like this you know your opponent goes first sets up a board it does not matter what your opponent is playing but let's say you're in a situation where you have two bestials in the hand you end up activating both bestials to stop your opponent from making their combos but then you look at your hand and you're like hey i have no sword soul monsters what can you do from here well this is why you play the spicy card in the extra deck that i was playing which by the way if you guys want the full deck profile check it out it's on the channel already but the reason you're playing something like Lanthalinkus over here which is the very very spicy card is because what ends up happening is now it gives you access to something like your Tengis to be special summoned and on top of that you're going to get the effects of something like Druus Worm which can now activate let's say to get rid of your opponent's Omni Negate your opponent's Chi Chow your opponent's whatever it is in this case it's a Chi Chow right but against any other deck you're just getting rid of any problem card and then what ends up happening is you can just feel free to go ahead and special summon your Tengi monsters from your hand which is absolutely insane now in this situation situation for example my opponent has uh the bestial monsters which is obviously still a thing it's obviously something that you're gonna have to be wary of however it just makes it so that you can get the multi-use of the tenyes you get the use of the bestials and again if your opponent doesn't have the bestial monsters then you're good to go from here right because you already have a link two on the board so honestly you can even play around the bestials and how you would want to do that is actually just by normal summoning your adhara in this case so let's say you're exactly in the same situation you can normal summon an adhara and then now you have access to a level eight so here you could go in into a Boxia potentially. Boxia could be really cool. Let's just say your opponent does bestial you. It doesn't really matter if they have a bigger board. You can of course go into your own Shi Shao. There's so many different options. Again, it all depends on what you're playing up against. So let's say in this case, you know, we go into a Shi Shao just to get our uh, Sword Soul engine online, right? So here we can go to Shi Shao. Shi Shao can now obviously search. Now let's say they want to use a bestial so we can't use our Ashuna effect, right? So in this case, let's say our opponent uses the Magnemoot and gets rid of our Ashuna so that we can't use the Ashuna effect well that's why something like an adhara can come up and again it all depends on what your hand looks like if you already have a sword soul in hand you know a lot of the things will change but in this case we've already used our normal summon so we can go something like even long one add it to your hand all right and then what ends up happening is you can actually use your adhara on top of that so that you can add the ashuna back to your hand right but let's just say you don't for now for now let's just say you're not doing that you can go the long one pitch the Bishuda and then what you can do is you can summon your long one now let's say your opponent is going to use the other bestial monster right because they don't want you to activate the Bishuda let's say they use the bestial monster get rid of the Bishuda it doesn't really matter I'm just showing you guys different things you guys can do at this point you can even go Destrudo so funny enough you can go Destrudo here I'm just going to actually show you guys a funny play it's not going to come up too often but I just want to show it to you guys so let's say you guys go Destrudo you target your uh, long one right now because Destrudo is now a level one you can go into a level nine with this so you can go into Shen Shen if you play something like psychic and punisher what you would do instead is target the token make this a level three then you can go level three and this into psychic and punisher i'm not playing it in this build but i'm just showing you guys different options so now you go into something like baron if you want to go into shen shen that could be another really cool option for you as well but again don't take this as this is exactly how you're playing it i just really want to show you guys what to do in certain situations and i think in a situation like this one you're playing around not having the sword soul monster in your hand to initially play right you're playing around having both the bestials and the tenyes in rotation because then what ends up happening again is that's the biggest part of the deck that doesn't synergize right so how do we make it synergize and this card right here land Flinkus, just really helps it synergize so obviously of course like if you don't think the chi chow is enough for you here you can go into shen shen let's say you're going as tier laments shen shen could be really powerful and then you, you know how the drill is right and, and keep in mind you also haven't used any of the tenyi effects in this case so in this spot you can actually go into your baron go into your shen shen and you're not worried about being locked into worm monsters 
So I know I said this is not a combo video, but I kind of want to show you guys what a combo can look like in this deck. And this is just a two card Tenyi combo. I'm sure you guys all know the Sword Soul combos. If you have a Moye plus a Worm in hand, you know how that works. If you have a Longawan plus a Worm in hand, you know how that works. And if you guys don't, you guys can check out my full combo video. I'll leave a link at the top of the description. But what I've noticed is a lot of people don't know how to play without the Sword Soul monsters, and they really need to learn how to play with the Tenyi monsters. And so in that last hand, I was showing you guys how to put the Tenyis and the Bistils together. But let me show you guys a quick Tenyi combo that I think is really powerful, especially if you don't open any of the Sword Soul monsters. And this combo doesn't require a normal summon. So let's say you had a Sword Soul like Moye and another Worm in your hand, then you can still continue on to push this combo even further. But this is just the most basic of combos, right? And if you had hand traps, it's even better because you're setting up your combo, but you also have hand traps. And so you're in a really good position at that spot, right? So let's start off here by activating our Shuna. And again, I know Bistil monsters are very relevant in today's format. So you do have to be careful of that. You don't want to just rely on these solely, but you know, it's a really cool option that you guys have. If your opponent doesn't draw any Bistils, that's a very like relevant thing. If they don't draw it, they don't draw it. You can play. Some people don't play the Bistil monsters. So for that reason, like, you know, this combo is really important to know. Here, what you're going to do is before you activate the Ashuna effect, you're going to activate Vishuda to special summon itself because you control no effect monsters. And because you control a non-effect monster, you can use the Ashuna to summon the Adhara here. And then Adhara and Ashuna, what that's going to let you do is going to let you go into your Chi Chao. And Chi Chao is really important. Now, obviously, if you're going second, you can go into something like Boxia. But in this case, you're going to go into Chi Chao just because we're acting like we have no other cards in hand, no other extenders, nowhere to go from here, right? So this is just the most basic combo. So what you're going to do is you're going to summon your Chi Chao. You're going to activate your Chi Chao effect to now add a card from your deck to your hand. Here, you're going to add the Moya. The reason you're adding the Moye here is because you still haven't used your normal summon. What we're going to do now, you guys might be wondering, hey, but Spanko, you don't have a Worm in your hand. Well, we're going to get a Worm in our hand. Our Adhara effect is going to trigger so that we can get Ashuna back to our hand. And keep in mind, the really cool thing about this deck, and especially Adhara, is if your opponent does have a Bestial monster, what you can end up doing is still adding it back to your hand with something like an Adhara, which is really powerful. But now what you're going to do is you're just going to normal summon your Moye. You can use the Moye effect to reveal the Ashuna. You're going to get a token to your side of the field, and then now you have another level eight synchro that you can go into so maybe you can go into a draco berserker that could be really relevant uh if you guys wanted you could also add long one long one pitch the ashuna and then go into a baron so this way at least you're ending on a baron as well so there's just a lot of different ways to play the deck i just really wanted to show you guys that what you can do with just the tenies without even opening a sword soul monster so let's say you open a hand similar to this one, where you open your Blackout, you open a Taiye, you open a Long Yuan. You have no access to Wumoye, you have no access to Tengiz, what do you do, all right? So how do you play around cards like Forbidden Droplet and Imperm and those kind of cards, or Suleek, which is really relevant in today's format as well, which are going to negate your card effects, right? So what you're going to do here is you're going to actually just start off by activating a Long Yuan, pitching the Blackout. And this is how I want to show you guys, like, you know, you can play this deck very optimally, because I'm going to show you guys a situation here, all right? Let's just get into it, and then I'll I'll explain it a little bit further so here we're going to summon a token so let's say the first thing you do here is summon a baron right so here we have the baron now and then you're going to burn your opponent for 12 okay all cool right okay so now you might be thinking, okay, I have a free Omni Negate. If my opponent tries to stop my plays, I can negate it with my Baron. I'm good to go. If they have a Nib, an Imperm, a Droplet, whatever it is, I have that negation, right? But what we're going to do instead here is we're going to Normal Summon our Moye. And this is why it's really important to know exactly what's going on with this deck. So let's say you activate the Moye effect and you're going to want to banish the Blackout. You're not going to want to banish the Long One. You're going to want to banish the Blackout. So in this case, let's say your opponent had an Imperm, okay? I don't, I don't, I'm obviously not playing with opponent. So what ends up happening is I'm going to get a token. But let's just say your opponent has an Imperm or a Negate, right? You're not going to get this token because your Taiye is now going to get negated. But the really cool thing about something like Blackout in the Graveyard, and this is the reason why I play two Blackout, is because if you banish it, Blackout is actually going to let you get another token to your side of the field. Now, in the situation where your opponent has a Droplet or an Imperm or a Sulik or any kind of negation, you're not going to have this token, all right? So just, uh, I don't know how to block it off, but just block off this token. It doesn't exist. But what ends up happening is you're playing around that Imperm. You're not having to use the Baron to negate that card, to negate the Droplet, to negate the Imperm, to negate the Sulik, to negate the monster that's negating your card. It never really matters because you're always going to get to hold that Baron negate because Blackout helps you play around those kind of negates. So now your combos are always going to be able to go through. And again, I know this sounds very simplistic, but these kind kind of small plays help you win a lot of games because your opponent is not playing it the way you're playing it. You know, your opponent might be like, all right, they have a Baron. I'm going to stop the tie. They're going to have to force the Baron negate on this. And then I can play through whatever else he makes because the Baron negate is gone, right? Well, in this case, if you have the blackout, if you're playing it smartly, then it doesn't matter. You can always hold your Baron negate. And honestly, holding the gates can be a very powerful thing because your opponent doesn't know when you're going to hit him with it. If you just let them push and push and push until the very most crucial 
step of their combo and then you negate that they're in a very bad position so that's why you want to hold this negate you don't want to just shotgun it and this is essentially a way to play around those kind of negates right so you don't have to use the baron Bench to back out, you get an extra token. Again, you get one token, you don't have two. In this case, I don't have a negate to show you guys, but you get one token, right? So uh, it becomes very powerful. Then here you can go into something like your Chi Chao. You can continue playing from here, right? So like you go Chi Chao, Chi Chao effect, and then Tai effect, let's say. You can go into something like, uh, you can even go into Boxia, honestly. You could have gone into Boxia here instead because you can tribute the Boxia, summon back the Moye. Just, just different plays you kids can do. Just so many different things, right? Depending on what your opponent has on their board, depending on what else you have in your hand. If you have hand traps, you play it differently if you have the bestial monsters you play it differently it all depends right but i just wanted to show you guys what you know a simplistic combo and a simplistic way to play around the gates can be so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now obviously i can't show you guys every single situation you're going to be in with sword soul it always depends on what decks you're playing up against but i really wanted to show you guys little intricate plays that can push you a lot further in these longer tournaments you guys would be surprised how these small small plays can just help you win games completely and help you outplay your opponent so if you guys did enjoy this video or you found this video informative make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one also let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any other ideas any other suggestions or any other situations that you found yourself in that i may not have included in this video so i hope you guys did enjoy make sure to subscribe guys the goal is 16,000 by the end of 2023 i know we can make it happen so i appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of my heart i wouldn't be here without you guys so thank you guys all for watching with that thank you guys